Okay, here's what we go got going on today. Uh, I was asked at uh, Brodak how I did the pocket fingers. Well, I have this uh, Dremel router, plunge router cable, and I have a quarter inch bit in it. And what we're going to do today is, is I'm going to route a groove right here. You have to be very careful on doing that. We're not going to route it very deep. I'll go ahead and get a dowel and finish sanding it off with sandpaper to get the groove in there. But I'll show you how that goes. I'm shooting this first section with a small camera. I'll come back with the uh, large camera and give you a better view. So we'll see you in a minute after I route this. Okay, just a quick shot of what I've done is I've taken the router and I have routed a groove, quarter inch groove in this 3 8 piece of wood. And the leading edge of this is rounded, and that fits right into the groove and gives you a good tight gap. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig through and find a dowel, put some sandpaper on the dowel, and then I go ahead and clean all this up. Then we're going to come back and cut these out, geodesic ribs, sheet it. This will be done. This whole stabilizer elevator, including all the sanding, can't take more than two hours to make. It's uh, not a big deal. So give me a minute, I'll get a dowel and sand this up and I'll be back. Uh, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> what I've done here is I've uh, sanded the, the groove smooth so it's a nice concave groove. And uh, I've rounded the leading edge of the uh, elevator and fitted it fit it and make sure that it fits correctly and it fits real nice. What we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to install my hinges. Now my hinges are just a uh, polywog looking or tadpole looking thing made of plywood. And I used to do them on the table saw but because I'm doing this video I can't do it on the table saw. Well I found a better way. And what I did is I made an installation tool, and it's a 3 seconds piece of pine or luan or some type of hardwood, one inch wide and 3 30 seconds thick. And then I wrapped sandpaper around it. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a groove into this flap uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So we're going to sand that in there right now. Try to keep it square. It should only take a few strokes to do this. It'll be nice and clean too. I don't want to go too far. Almost. Good. And what that gives you is that. Now we're going to take this on the flat side and we're going to sand a notch half the distance. I sold a, quite a few sets of these. Matter of fact, I sold out of these hinges at Brodak. And they were asking me how to install them, so I'm giving the demo right now. We'll sand the, the pin pocket right here, and that's half the distance. That's good. Make sure it's square to the tripping edge. So basically what you're going to end up with is a, is a notch that looks like that. This, this part here is 3 8 of an inch from the trailing edge down and this part here is half the distance. And that's where the hinge pin right here will reside. 
<coughs> it'll become pretty clear as we go but here's the uh, here's what the hinge looks like and it fits in to that just like so and the wire is captured right here and you just glue on balsa wood and then re-sand it to the shape and this is a pocket hinge so I'll, I'll finish this off and come back in a few seconds and uh, this whole hinging process on this type hinge you know 15 minutes and you got a set of hinges that you'll never go back to the plate hinges so I'll show you in a second so I'll be back in a moment okay I wanted to show this before I get any farther I've been working on it for five minutes so here's what we got we're gluing in blocks in this area here and then we're going to carve and shape them so here's one that's been glued in and one that's open and I'll cut a block and, and glue that in there and I'm using thin set CA but be very careful not to get it in the pen because then you've defeated the purpose and you're going to lock up the hinge and these hinges are super free you can use epoxy white glue bubble gum <laughs> whatever your favorite glue is to get the wood to stick because you're just gluing wood is basically what you're doing and what actually holds gives the hinge the actual bind or the that area of the strength is when you cover it you're going to be doping over that leading edge and it becomes locked up into one piece that dope and uh, soak span becomes rock hard like I say it take you know it only if I wasn't making this movie I'd probably be done by now hinging this So I've cut and fit a block for there and I'm going to hold it in, push it down and a drop of CA on it. Tilting it away from the hinge so that the CA doesn't wick down into the, into the pen, make sure it's free. It is. I'm hoping that the guys that uh, bought the hinges at Brodax either watch this video or have a clue on how it's done. I mean, I didn't have anybody to show me how to do it. I just had to figure it out for myself. So now you take a X-Acto knife and we're going to trim away the excess on the leading edge here. And then I'll take the sanding block and sand it to shape so that it blends in with the leading edge of the uh, elevator. And mounting it is, is even easier because we're going to hold it up to the stabilizer, drill two eighth inch holes and slide it in. And the Epoxy is what holds the, the hinge in. And the nice thing about this is everything is wood on wood. It's not wood on plastic. You could use white glue to hold these hinges in and it would be just as strong. <clears throat> as epoxy because it's wood on wood I'm only charging ten dollars for a set of hinges for an airplane and I probably should charge more because they take me longer to make than they do to install <laughs> Peening over all those little brass 
grommet. Then I'll take some 320 and finish it off. Of course, it'll get sanded several more times before finishing is done, but this is just roughed it out. I just don't want to make a movie of me sanding, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I, I'll show you this, I'll cut the camera, finish off the hinges, we'll come back and uh, I'll show you how to install them into the stabilizer, which is nothing more than drilling some holes. But there is one hinge sanded and finished, and that will blend perfectly into the trailing edge of the this stabilizer and it's recessed the nice thing about this groove that I've cut now this was a 3 8 piece with a quarter inch groove but remember we're going to sheet this with a sixteenth on each side so then I'll come back with another a dowel and kind of sand the sheeting off so we'll have a 3 8 a 3 8 concave in there perfectly and you don't want to recess it too far because one of the things that I did worry about is when you're in a hard maneuver, this flexes and it might give you some bind. However, I've done two airplanes like this in the same configuration. And when you fly one of my airplanes with these hinges on, it's like power steering because there is no resistance. So then that's a band wall. <laughs> The Netsaban wall won't be a problem. Of course, my airplanes aren't 90 ounces either. But, uh, that's how you do the hinges. I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll mount them into the stabilizer. Then I'll cut that out, geodesic it up, skin it, and, and finish it off. And like I said, this whole thing, including hinges and everything, is two hours tops. And you'll have a nice elevator stabilizer you know that people go wow how did you do that and it's not a big deal it's it's really simple and if you try it yeah you'll screw a few of them up but just keep trying because it's it's not hard so I'll be back in a moment okay I've been working on this uh, off camera I, I just kind of wanted to show you what we're doing here uh, I've cut out the centers, and I've put the geodesic ribs in on, on this side, and I've sheeted one side. Uh, the hinging, I showed you how I put those hinges in the elevators. You just drill some holes in the uh, trailing edge, and you'll see that this is concaved real nice. And push that in. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut a skin out and then skin the top side this is the bottom but you'll notice there is no there is no hinge gap whatsoever no need for hinge tape um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a skin and how I how I apply them is I just used uh, the carpenter's glue white glue and go around the perimeter and I smooth it in real good now I'd, li I'd like to talk about that real quick when you put white glue on balsa wood, the wood warps. So you have to have it on a straight table and wave it and let it dry. It takes about eh, half an hour to dry as long as you don't have it on in big clumps. Put it on very thin, push the piece down on it. Now we're going to try the iron-on method. Um, for the sheeting on the wing and that's how that's where you put the tight bond on and let it tack up and then come back when when it's tacky and iron it on and I know not many have seen that done but uh, 
we're going to iron the sheeting on the wing and that that'll uh, keep it from twisting uh, I do a lot of stuff that <laughs> it's a little different, a little off the wall so I'm going to cut this piece of sheeting for the top I'll come back in a few minutes oh, well it won't be a few minutes, I'll come back when the sheeting's dry and I go ahead and shape that now I started this elevator stabilizer today I will finish it today ready to install and let's let's get a uh, a rundown on the parts and how fast these actually put you're able to put them together first off if I built the elevator stabilizer in one day I'll go ahead and cut a rudder so that's that in one day and the fuselage they usually take me one day so we got two days in it and the wings take about two days so now we got four days into this project total now this is a realistic number four days into the project now these are eight hour days this is not a a two hour here two hour there um, you got four days into the project on the fifth day you're installing the control so you got a weekend and you should have an airplane ready to go on its wheels the finishing is what takes the time and uh, we'll go about that I still have to uh, install the two bearings for the for the uh, horn and when I do that I will make sure to make note of that because the bearing the bearing set off the trailing edge 3 16 as well so everything is in a perfect straight line and if if you'll notice how how these hinges operate I mean barrel hinges don't act like that and like I said these hinges are like power steering and uh, <clears throat> since I've went away from ball links and went only to bushed horns that's made the world of difference and the reason why I went away from ball links and if you think about it the ball link has a quarter inch of surface area and the bushed horn setup only has 330 seconds it's metal on metal the ball links metal on plastic the plastic tends to swell and change uh, it distorts with temperature and it locks up I've had them lock up already in flight <clears throat> at different temperatures and different humidities it's just not good so I went back to the uh, to the bush horns and everything everything that I went back to is much better than the than the new system while I was at Brodax uh, talking to Jerry Phelps looking at his beautiful Patriot I said uh, Jerry what's this covered with it was covered with Japanese tissue I don't know some of you may know Jerry some of you may not I've known him quite a few years and he is an excellent builder and finisher and this plane is absolutely gorgeous it's light and uh, I guess as long as you don't poke it Japanese tissue is going to work so I've been using polyspan on these big wings for fear because I'm a kind of a clutch for fear of poking holes and things but I did use silk span on the uh, MC-72 so this airplane is going to have silk span double out silk span if, if Jerry Phelps can get away with Jap tissue I'm, I can get away with double lot so uh, give me a few minutes I'm going to kind of clean up the mess um, cut out the skin get it weighted and glued and let it set up and uh, when I come back we'll do something else but like I said this is one day's progress not eight hours either I mean I've only worked on this maybe an hour total uh, including the, the cutting sanding and all that between videoing and to about an hour to this point and uh, that includes airfoiling the uh, the elevators and uh, when I get this on I'll show you how I airfoil cross hatching the sanding with 30 grit to get it started and then 80 grit and then 220 and then 320 and that's it <coughs> I don't know what this weighs, but let's just take a look. I know that it's not as light 
it's a big elevator stabilizer, but it's not as light as the one that when I had that good <laughs> four pound wood. And unfortunately, I just don't have any of that. And well, we're lighter than when we started, but not by much. So we're going to look for a two ounce elevator. What can I say? That's just the way it goes. I have an 11 gram piece, 4 inches wide, 16th that I'll use for the top sheet. So I'm going to cut the camera and get the sheet cut and get it glued, get it started, weighted, and I'll be back. See you in a minute. Well, welcome back. Uh, I went ahead and didn't do anything on the elevator stabilizer. After our last shot, I just let it dry overnight. And it's straight, and that's what we're going to work on. However, last night I did uh, paint the pilot. And uh, I've got a few touch-ups to do on his face. He's not exactly perfect. But he looks respectable, and that's what we're going to do. And <clears throat> I've got a little microphone that I have to glue in yet. And I'm not sure I'm going to do that, because I don't want the thing to fall off while it's uh, flying and be flopping around inside the canopy. So... What I'm going to do is I'll set this small camera down and uh, I'm going to show you how I airfoil the uh, stabilizer. So I'll be back in a minute. Well, here you see the stabilizer that's been, uh, it's 3 8 sheeting in the center. It's hollowed out, geodetic ribs inside, then it's sheeted on both sides with 16th. I sheeted this with uh, the white glue, the tight bond. <coughs> and I let it dry overnight. It's extremely stiff and relatively light. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put an airfoil on it and I'm going to show you how I do that. I take a ballpoint pen and I use the finger method and I draw a, a light center line down the center of the leading edge. and around the tips. Now remember this has the uh, concave trailing edge in the tip. So a little of detail is going to have to be taken to, to do that when I get around that corner. I also don't want to airfoil the center where the fuselage sits, so I'm going to mark that off. And the reason that I don't is I want that the fuselage opening is cut square. Uh, I want that to rest on both top and bottom of the fuselage side so I have zero incidence. I'll just show a few minutes of how I get this shape and then I'll finish shaping it off camera because it's rather boring to sit and watch somebody sand. But anyway, I've got it marked out now. And I'm going to take a plane and plane the leading edge. We're going to remove some wood. comes off relatively fast. Don't set your blade to dig more than a few thousandths of an inch at a time and you won't have a big gouges in the wood. So there we have uh, the leading edge basically in a basic shape formed already. The Solingen plane works good. This, I believe, is a uh, Hobbyco plane. Use a sharp blade in it. Sharp blades are very important. The quality of your model will improve vastly if you use sharp equipment. The better the equipment, the better the model turns out. Okay, so now we have a basic leading edge 
rolled on here. It's uh, it's going to have to be sanded straight now. Anyway, 80 grit paper. I'm not going to use the 30. I thought I was, cause, but I don't have to remove much wood. What you want to do is get a block and you want to sand in an arc. Starting at the, at the leading edge and rolling up towards the center. Now I go one way and then I go the other way. It's a cross pass shape. Remember, people have asked, why the, how can I build so fast? Well, it's in knowing how to use the tools. As a mechanic, I would interview new mechanics coming into the trade. And I'd say, well, let me see your tools. And they'd show me a, a box of hammers. And I'd say, well, what are you doing with those? He said, well, I'm going to work here. No, you're not. Proper tool for the proper job. Proper sandpaper grit for each application. Very important. Now, basically, we have this one side roughed in already. And I mean it's real close down to the line, leave the line on. So how much time did that take? Basically just a minute. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Remember, you want to sand in an arc. It, it's a feel. Sanding is an art. And believe me, when I look at the airplanes at the Nationals, I can tell who sanded what. Sanding is a signature. And I see a lot of airplanes sanded by the same person. I don't know if they're making the parts or whatever, but I can see it. and finish off the, the roundness with a, just a single piece of paper. And remember what I said about the, uh, the area here, because it's concaved right here. You want to make it mate the elevator stabilizer, or the stab elevators. And before we finish sand that, we'll leave quite a bit of the material on. Before we finish sand that, we'll go ahead and put the uh, elevator on it so that they... I can sand up to it and it looks like one piece. Many ways to do things. This is just my way. Uh, it's always worked for me. So here we go. It's, it's pretty close to shaped. I take some of the sticky back paper in hand. Remember this is 80 grit. And of course we're going to start going down on grit. You can use a fixture, a small tool, piece of foam, some of the sanding blocks from, from some of the companies. I can't remember the name of them. But the old-fashioned way is just as good, if not better, in a lot of cases. So I'll do this half. We'll cut the tape. I'll finish the other half off uh, off camera. Before I do that, I'll I'll go ahead and show you what I mean by fitting the elevator. Now I have a top side and a bottom side marked here with the arrow. This this weighs up, and it this is the left that I marked left, which is inboard side. And they just slide on there, those hinges. And we want this area here to mate perfectly. So we're going to put that on and sand up to the uh, 
and up to the counterbalancer, so it looks like it was meant to be that way. You don't, you certainly don't want to, you know, you spend a lot of time, or some time, in designing this airplane. You certainly don't want to waste it on the, on the small things, you know, if, where you have a nice rounded surface and it, all of a sudden it goes into a square mates up to a square part. You want it to look like it flows together. Strive for perfection. That's uh and that's gonna look real good. Now <clears throat> to finish that off I got a piece of 220 here. So we've went from 80 to 220 and if I had to remove more material I would have used 30 I think what I'm going to do is this will be the uh, video for the day. I posted the other one yesterday. I'll, I'll post this one today and I'll start making another one. Now we're going to spend about two days building the wings. So it'll be a... Unfortunately the, the fuselage, well, it's not really unfortunate, but the fuselage took about a week to do and that's not because I, I was it was hard or whatever it's because I didn't work on it so we have a one part a day rule the wing is two days so you got an airplane in a week and the, the finish is what uh, is what really takes the time all the sanding of the the dope and the time for drying and and such and uh, really appreciate Sean Shug Emery, I, I guess is his name, him doing his videos for beginners. They're they're really good. I, I suggest that you go watch his channel. Uh, that is the, uh, you know, he's promoting Control Line, and that's a good thing. Use your eye. That looks pretty good. So basically we have one side done that quick. We got it framed up. The thing that took the longest was letting the glue dry overnight. It, uh, it had it, I wanted this stiff because this is a big airplane. So I'll edit this up. I'll finish the, uh, finish sanding all this up. There's, you know, some details to go down to 320 and make it Smooth. It'll take me another half an hour of sanding this uh, stabilizer, and you certainly don't want to watch me sand for a half an hour. I think this airplane is going to be super cool. Uh, to add to my collection, I really, really like the, the Continental XL that I built in tribute to Tom. And so this red Monado, which I know there was never a red Monado with gold leaf lettering, is going to be really nice. It's going to be seven shades of red. I have the uh, Miss Ashley red will be the base coat, fire engine red for the trim, pearl, uh, crimson red for trim in trim, then there's some other areas on the airplane with the gold leaf lettering and the black outlines. We're going to be doing a gold leaf on video. I'm going to, I have to buy some variegated gold leaf. I have some regular leaf, but I, I'd like the uh, copper type burnt heated look and I'm going to burnish it as well. I do have sizing, which I will not be using. I'll be using dope as a sizing. But I do have some one-shot lettering enamel, which I'll go around the outside with a striping brush. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to shoot Phil Granderson's uh, clear on this airplane stuff that I've never, never used before. But it seems to be the way to go where I can 
clear this whole airplane with urethane and I don't know four ounces of material so three three to four ounces of material so we're gonna add two ounces of paint so we gotta build it basically pretty light because we know that the paint job is going to weigh a ton but it, you know in order for it to be a tribute to Tom and the Millennium Monado it has to look good because Tom was a builder extraordinary his finishes were unbelievable Bob Whiteley is supposed to be posting some pictures of the purple Bonato with some lids that hit out. I know the Continental still survives. You've got to remember these airplanes are 40 years old, 35 to 40 years old, and they still look beautiful. So, what I'm going to do is shut the camera off, edit the video, get it posted, and we'll see you when I come back. I'll have the stabilizer done, and we'll start on the way. So, see you.